Hello and welcome back to ICT and Computer Science with Miss Price. Um, today in this video we're going to discuss data transmissions. Now you may think that sounds boring but it's not. You really need to think about how does data transmit from your device to somebody else's device. Every time you send a text message, every time you send a video, every time you send a picture. What about those small things we do in a classroom such as when your teacher says can you please send your work to the printer? What happens there? What about when you're on the phone talking to somebody and somebody else is on the internet? Have you ever thought about that? Keep watching this video and I promise you will become an expert in data transmission. Hope you enjoy the video. Firstly, we're going to look at what is data transmission. So we're going to look at what it is, think about it, and then we're going to look at different types of data transmission. So what I'm hoping for by the end of this video is you're going to be an expert and you're going to be able to look at something and say, oh, that's simplex, oh, that's duplex, yeah, that's half duplex, oh, that's serial there. And, um, and I'm hoping that you become an expert that you might look at people and actually say, ah, I know what that is. So let's get straight into it shall we now this is simply when a data is sent over the communication medium so a communication medium can be any form of computer that you're using because if you um, looked at some of my earlier videos um, you'll see that there's so many different types of computers that we use every day and the medium is simply one computer to another so maybe you've got for example computers networked or maybe you've got one laptop talking to another to play a game or something or send messages to each other who knows um, a network which you should be familiar with um, the networks now that you would use are being school so there will be school networks with servers but then there's also your home network as well so think how many devices do you have connected to your router Communication devices such as smartphones. So we can transmit the data in several ways. So for example, Bluetooth connections, um, using message mediums such as WhatsApp is really familiar. And then electronic devices such as Bluetooth devices. So for example, when you've got your phone or your tablet connected to a speaker. Now, what data can be sent? So the data that can be sent is, and I'm sure you've already thought about this, is both analog and digital. So you're probably thinking, well, analog data, what is that? Now, analog data is the data that is around you every day. So it could be something as simple as you're standing outside and think, oh, it's rather cold today. Oh, it's very hot today. And then what we do is, is we may look at our phones and probably look at the weather and look at the temperature. And then what's happening is, is, is that that goes through a processor and then we will receive the digital data, as you can see there with the picture on the right, that would be the 27 degrees, where we can actually make sense of it. So we can actually make sense and say, oh, it's hotter than I thought it was today. Oh, 27 degrees, that makes sense, it's quite hot today. Um, or maybe you might look at your phones one day and think, oh, that explains the frost outside. Yeah, it's minus 10. So that's how we make sense of it. But to be honest, transmitting data is usually um, mainly for sending and receiving digital data. Now, digital data can fall into many different forms. So here's an example. You're on WhatsApp and you're going to send a message. Now, the message may not necessarily be a text message. It may be a picture message. It may be a video it may be a gif image it could be several so you may send that from one phone to another or you may be part of a group on something like whatsapp or an email group or a group on messenger or anything and you may be sending that digital data to several different phones so it is mainly used for sending and receiving digital data because it's something that we all do on a regular basis whether we do that for social for work 
for educational purposes, we are sending and receiving digital data every day of our lives. So now we need to think about how does this data travel? Because you've already thought about what data transmission is. You've already realized you use it every day. So we need to give it more thought about how it travels. So look at the stimuli I've got on the right there. What does that say to you? Well, I'm going to go through it with you and I'm hoping that you'll guess at least two of those three images and maybe you can um, put some um, discussion to them. So, a digital signal will originate from the device in the form of separate signals. So that'd be just streamed as zeros and ones. So we know computers talk in zeros and ones, okay? Whether that's ASCII code, binary, they speak to us in a bunch of zeros and ones. And these signals are sent through, well, a few different mediums, but the first one is copper cable. Most interconnect connections at one point were copper cable connections. Then we have wireless signals that are with us every day, whether that's in the form of our internet or our data and so on. And then there's fiber optic. And obviously, fiber optic cable and wireless signals are quicker, particularly fiber optic, and that has made the internet what it is today. So how we can watch videos, you know, we've got Netflix and so on, because our internet is so much quicker, we can do so much more. But we need to consider these factors as well. So what I want you to think about in future is every time you start sending data somewhere, is, is that you're going to consider some factors. So, now, data can be sent basically both long distances and short distances. Now, a typical example of a short distance is not necessarily, oh, well, I'm going to WhatsApp my mum who's downstairs. It's like, for example, when you're in your classroom at school and your teacher says to you, um, I'd like you to print your work, that is a short distance. And... When our work goes straight to the printer and there's no problems, we probably never complain about it. We don't think twice about it, but when there's an error, we do consider it. So, now the direction. So I need to consider this. Um, whether you send data from a long distance or a short distance, what direction is it going? Is the data going in one direction or is it going in both? The method, how many bits are sent? Is it one bit at a time? Is it eight bits at a time? Is it 16 bits at a time? how many is going and how it's synchronizing so how it all gets there in one piece now these are the types of transmissions that I'm going to discuss and this is where I want you to become very confident and in the future take a look around when you send something and think oh is that a simplex transmission is that a duplex transmission and start getting you know curious and if you're not sure always you know look it up so, now, these are really simple, really easy. A simplex transmission. So every time your teacher says, I would like you to send your work to the printer right now, you are completing a simplex transmission. So as you can see, the computer sends the signal to the printer. It goes in one direction. So that is a simplex transmission. But obviously, the printer's not sending no signal to the computer half duplex transmission okay so this will go in both directions but not at the same time now I thought this was quite a good example is a two-way radio so many years ago many years ago now when I worked on a camp in America I was in the mountains of Pennsylvania we had I mean mobile phones weren't very common then anyway there was a round but they wasn't very common and we had no mobile phone signal there whatsoever we was in a valley in the mountains so the only way we could communicate was using radios but you can't speak at the same time because the person on the other side of the radio won't get the message so generally someone would speak the other person would have to listen and then they may say over or a signal may go through like a noise to say that the other person's stopped talking and then once that person stops sending their transmission, you can start sending yours. So it can go at the same time, but it can only go from A to B or B to A. Sorry, ignore the C there. 
then there's duplex transmission now this is something you're probably very common uh, very familiar with and it's very common so it's when all the data can go at the same time in both directions so for example i remember when years ago we had an internet connection but if someone was using the internet they couldn't use the landline and phone anybody at the same time. We had to wait until that person had logged off the internet. But then thanks to broadband, people could talk on the phone at the same time. We could use the internet at the same time. So the data can actually be sent in both directions simultaneously. Now, we're going to go a little bit deeper. Should we dive a bit deeper? The answer is yes. So we're now going to look at serial and parallel transmission so we've done duplex half duplex and simplex now we're going to do serial and parallel transmission you'll be an expert by the time this finishes so serial data transmission so that's when the data is simply going one bit at a time um, down a channel or a single cable so it can be transmitted um, using any of the three factors, simplex, duplex, half duplex, but it travels one bit at a time. So it's very good over long distances because everything will arrive in sync, but the rate of transmission is slower. And you're probably thinking we don't use that anymore, but we do. And you're going to find out where. So an example would be a modem over a telephone line. Um, basically um, or a router over a telephone line and so on now parallel transmission works really well over short distances because the the bits can be transmitted say for example eight bits at a time so the data can be split into eight bits sent down eight different channels and obviously get there very very quickly um, over short distances is fantastic but over long distances the data can arrive at different times and out of synchronization. Now, this works really well on the internal parts of a computer because obviously, if the data is going from one part of the computer to another, then you know it, it basically is fine because that's short distances, that's not a long distance. So, we still use both of these transmissions parallel and serial. So here's an example. So the USB cable is serial data. So that's just one cable, the data travels one bit at a time down that cable. And we use them all the time. And then the ribbon connector there is used on the internal parts of the computer. So it can travel really quick because the internal parts of a computer, as you would have seen in one of my other videos, has to work really, really fast. So that's why we still use the ribbon connectors inside the computer. Now, I hope you found this insightful and I hope now you feel very confident about data transmission. So thank you for watching. Please do subscribe and please do press the like button on my videos. Teachers, don't forget to visit my shop on TESS. Um, I have very cheap um, resources on there and also some free resources. And follow me on Twitter, Miss Price C S C I. And don't forget to click on the link for the free activity and uh, download it and complete it at your leisure. Thank you very much.